Hi, my name is Jason Hepp, and I'm a solution architect here at Ivan. Thanks for joining me today to talk about our latest service offering, Apache Flink. With Flink, your data pipelines can now support real-time data processing and streaming analytics. The power of this can all be unlocked with simple SQL statements and no code. Your organization will now be able to onboard teams throughout your business to work on your data in real time using streaming processing rather than batch analytics. Today, the use case I'm going to show is quite simple and straightforward, yet it's just the tip of the iceberg for what is possible with Flink. So let's get started. Here, let's look at our Ivan console. You will see that I have several Postgres servers running as well as several Kafka services running. Our beta service offering for Apache Flink will allow you to integrate with either Postgres or Kafka to both read or push data to either one of these services. Let's create a, a Flink service now. Navigate here to create a new service. From here, you're gonna to navigate to Apache Flink. <clears throat> And the pop-up that you're gonna see is basically warning you that we do not recommend to put production workloads on Flink as it is in beta from Ivan. We will also potentially be reaching out to find out more information from you about how you are utilizing Flink. And we're just basically al allowing this. So I'll agree to that. From there, you're gonna pick the cloud that you're, you'd like to procure. We're gonna pick Google. I'll stick to the United States and the US West region. And I'm going to pick a business floor plan that will meet our needs today. And I'm going to give the Flink service a name, Flink Demo. Here on the right hand side, you'll see that this is going to be the price. Ivan offers the price for any of our services with all networking included. There is no additional charges for any networking or any data going to or through our services. Let's start the service. Here, you'll see that the Flink service is now running. We'll give it a few minutes as it's starting up. In the meantime, let's look at the use case that we'll be talking about today. The use case that we're talking today about is basic filtering. We're going to be emulating CPU metrics of utilization coming from maybe several systems in your, that you're monitoring throughout your architecture. We will be sending those metrics into a Kafka topic from there, we'll be running a Flink job to monitor the data coming into that Kafka topic. And then whenever there is a record that has a CPU utilization greater than 80%, we will filter that message out and put that onto a new Kafka topic. The downstream Kafka topics that are produced here could then be used by alerting systems to raise awareness that there is a CPU that may be running a little bit hot. With the Kafka source, when we're building the Flink job, it has two data tables that represent the data. We will be putting a data table to represent the incoming data, and we'll be putting a data table to represent the output data. Let's dive in to first showing you what we have in terms of the messages. This is a simple uh, Python script that's going to produce messages onto a Kafka topic. As you can see, we're pushing messages uh, with the host name. There are the seven dwarfs from Snow White and the CPU, the usage, and the time. You can see that there's several sort of random numbers that are being generated between 70 and 100%. So that anything that's greater than 80, we will be filtering out. Navigating back to our production server, a Kafka, let's go see the topic that this data is being generated on. Here, you'll see that the messages are coming into CPU stats raw. We can look at the messages that are coming in by changing the format to JSON and clicking fetch messages. As the data comes up, we'll see that the messages are exactly the same. We are only producing the key, which is just the host name. And then the message itself is the timestamp and the CPU utilization that's coming in. And you can see that there's many coming in at the same time. Let's go back to where now the Flink service is running. And as we can see, the Flink service is ready. When you get into the Flink service, you're gonna see that we have a couple of links. 
This link here will get you to our dev portal, which will bring you to many examples, including the example that I'm going to be showing you today, as well as other help articles and other information about configuring your Flink service. Here, this is the link that will allow you to watch this tutorial again. But let's get started with Flink. What we need to do right off the bat is we need to integrate either Postgres servers or Kafka servers into Flink. Here, you can see that these are all of the servers that I have procured into my account. I only want to pull into the production servers, so I'm going to filter by prod. And you can see that I can integrate with either the Kafka prod or the Postgres prod. I'm going to only use Kafka today, so let's integrate with that. Now, you'll see that the Kafka service is fully integrated and is available to use for this Flink service. This green light means that it's integrated properly. The three dots here will allow you to also remove that integration point if needed. We're gonna leave it the way that it is. Now that we have our Kafka topic integrate, a Kafka service integrated, excuse me, let's go to jobs and data. This is where you're gonna set up the jobs. Here is the simple steps that you'll follow. Create an Ivan Flink service, check, we did that. Create a service integration for data services, check, we did that. Now we need to create the data tables. We're gonna navigate over to the data tables and this is where we're going to create the data tables that represent the input uh, Kafka topic as well as the output Kafka topic. The Kafka topic that we're going to be pulling data from is the CPU stats raw. Here, you're gonna pick the connector type. The SQL connector is what we will use today because this is going to be reading data from the Kafka topic without modifying data on the output. The upsert will allow you to modify data or delete data on an output stream if based on the message coming in. We are not gonna be worried about the key structure coming in today. And then the data that's coming into us on the message or the value in this case is JSON. Now, we need to create the data table that represents our input. We will call it CPU in, and we're going to define the, <clears throat> excuse me, the table structure as this. We have the host name, we have a CPU percentage, we have the usage, the occurred at, and several times. The watermark feature allows Flink to represent where it is during the processing of that Kafka topic. So now we can say, create the data table. As we're creating the data table, uh-oh, we see that there's an error. This one seems pretty simple. It looks like I made a simple mistake in adding a comma, or forgetting a comma, excuse me. Let's create it again. The reason why I wanted to show you that is you're, you're gonna have confidence in that what you're producing in our console is going to actually be valid. And here it is, here is the valid uh, input data table that we're going to be using. The three dots will allow you to either de delete the table and recreate it if you're missing a column, for example, or we can look at the details of what the schema is, SQL schema, as well as the data columns and what they mean. Let's create the output uh, data table now. Here, we're going to create a new Kafka topic to write our data to. We're going to call it CPU stats filter. Same SQL connector, same key and same JSON for the message uh, value. We will call it CPU out filter for the data table name. And here is the SQL schema for to define that data table. We're gonna take the timestamp, the host, the CPU and the utilization. And again, we're gonna create that table. And there it is, CPU out filter. Heading back to the jobs table, we're now onto step four create the SQL job. So now we're gonna do that here by navigating back to the, create, to the create SQL job tab. What you're going to do here is you're gonna give it a job name. We're gonna call it simple filter. We're then gonna create, select the data tables that we're going to read from and write to. And here is the SQL statement that we're going to use. It's quite simple, but this is extremely powerful. We're gonna select all of the data, all of these columns from the input table, and then wherever the message, or I'm sorry, wherever the usage is greater than 80%, we are going to filter that and write that out to the output, out filter table. 
Let's create this job. Once the job is running, you will see that a task slot is used. Task slots represent how many Flink jobs can run on one cluster at a time. This is configurable within the advanced configuration of Flink to add more task slots. And as you can see, we've used one slot. Let's go back to the job. And here we are. We see that the job is now running. One other thing that I wanted to point out was the advanced Flink web UI. This is another console that will give you additional detail about your Flink job. So as we log in, here's a specific Flink dashboard for looking at more details about your jobs that are running. Here's the job that we just created, Simple Filter. And as you can see, there's additional information about it. You can see an overview of, about what's actually happening behind the scenes, any exceptions that may have occurred, the timeline for, what, for what's happening, checkpointing into the data for where it is, and any other additional configuration. This gives you advanced visibility into your jobs. So now that the job is, is running, where's the data? Navigating back, remember we read data from our Kafka topic of CPU stats raw, and we're writing the data out to CPU stats filter. Let's look at the data. We change the message again to JSON, and we fetch the messages. As the messages come up, we can see that all of the messages should have a utilization usage utilization over 80%, and they all do. Our job is working as planned. The simple filter is working. Now we can do something with this data, alert, raise an exception, etc. So in summary, we hope that you give Apache Flink a try and share your feedback with Ivan. For more guidance, navigate to our developer portal from our main website, Ivan.io. Many new features and improvements are planned, so give Flink a try and stay tuned for updates. Thanks for your time. <laughs>